So good day everyone and welcome to our second semester and your subject with me will be uh, home economics literacy. So kung nung first quarter we have focused on uh, industrial arts, now it's all about the home economics uh, part naman ng uh, TLE. So this will just be a review, uh, parang industrial arts, you have already uh, taken those uh, subjects, the areas in industrial arts when you were in high school. Now, home economics, uh, ganun din. Ang mga discussion natin dito, nakafocus sa um, housekeeping, caregiving, uh, cooking, baking, occupational health and safety, but it's more of exploratory courses. Okay, so if uh, you have, again, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message, post comments on our Google Classroom, and so on. So I hope na all of you are doing well, ready for the second semester. Uh, sana makayana natin lahat ng, ng challenges for this year and in the coming years. Uh, things are so uncertain. But um, I'm very proud, to all of you, that you've you've made it this second semester. And sana hanggang sa makatapos, sana lahat tayo ay uh, makatapos sa pag-aaral. Okay, so, so much for that. Before we proceed with the, the first area in home economics, first let's define what is home economics. So, when we say home economics from um, Oxford, this is cooking and other aspects of household management, especially as taught at school. This is also a subject or class that teaches skill, such as cooking or sewing, which are useful in the home. At school, the study of cooking, sewing, and subjects related to the management of a home. So, some may say that, ah, madali lang naman ang TLE, ang home economics, or ang industrial arts. Actually, some think that home economics is the much, much easier than uh, industrial arts. However, hindi lang ganun-ganon ang, ang home economics. It's, ayan nga, sabi, household management. And as we all know, um, ang daming aspect sa isang uh, home, ang daming kailangang i-consider. And this subject is not just, it's not easy. It's never easy. Um, managing your own family, managing even yourself, right? I'm not sure if some of you have uh, experienced living alone or baka meron dito nagbo-board uh, I, I think some of you here already have their own family so ang hirap right ang hirap na i-balance yung budgeting pagluluto um, taking care of the kids or kung may mga kapatid or uh, kung mag-isa ka man paano mo i-budget yung yung pera mo yung bills mo, yung, yung expenses, and so on. So, there's a lot of things that you, we need to, to know in uh, our daily lives. And ito yung tinuturo sa home economics. So, we should not disregard or maliitin si, si home economics because it's so important. Actually, there's... Um, uh, some articles I've read na karamihan ng mga uh, newly graduates, for instance, they don't know how to budget their finances. Hindi nila alam paano ba, ano yung mga bills na to, ano yung, paano tumatakbo yung SSS, yung um, insurances, yung um, other government payments, and so on, which is necessary when you have your own family or when you're already living alone. At tinuturo ngayon 
sa home economics. So, it's part of that. Ang daming mga kabataan or young adults, they don't know how to do that because wala eh, na-compromise yung home economics. So, this is also, uh, for me, home economics is a practical application of all the academic fields, the academic subjects, science, math, uh, English, or communication. Um, kung gagawin natin yung mga subjects na yun in a practical sense, it's TLE. Either home economics or industrial arts. Kasi dito meron pa ding math in terms of budgeting, in terms of uh, practical finance or entrepreneurial finance. Science, food science. Okay, so there's there's chemistry in uh, food as we all know. So um, if if uh, you're having your own business or your own family, so kailangan alam mo kung paano yung um, menu planning, the proper, the healthy way of planning a menu. Okay, and, and so on. And these skills can also be turned into something profitable. For instance, as mentioned, sewing, cooking. So, yung mga skills na to pwede nating uh, gamitin to put up our own business. That's why home economics, industrial arts, or TLE in general is definitely so useful not just for us to know how to live on our own or when we have a family, pero pwede mo siyang magamit for, for business or even uh, employment purposes. So, let's start off with the history of home economics education. Paano nga ba nagsimula to uh, dito sa Pilipinas, even in the other countries? Because, um, as we all know, Kung, at kung mapapansin nyo rin sa picture na in-include ko sa presentation ko, puro babae, right? Because, uh, yun nga, home economics is focused on household management and we have this stereotype, we have this thinking na, ah, pag, pag household management, dapat babae yan. Or, ang mga babae, dapat marunong magluto, marunong mag-alaga ng, ng bata, Marunong, basta marunong sa bahay, in short. Okay, yung mga different tasks. So, let's take a look how it developed from that until now na ang home economics, hindi na lang siya nakafocus sa, uh, for girls or uh, hindi lang in-offer yon for uh, women, even for men. Actually, there are a lot of uh, chefs, famous chef, right? Na guys, Gordon Ramsay, for example, so successful. Uh, meron din sa, sa fashion industry na mga men. So, and, and vice versa with industrial arts naman, there are also uh, women flourishing with electronics. Um, Ano pa ba? Sa, sa, sa something about uh, industrial arts. Okay, so many women are also known for that area. So let's start with education of early Filipinos. So the economic situation during the pre-colonial times was the great contributor and a major factor in the system of education in the Philippines. So even before, nung... Uh, uh, before the Spanish colonization, so with their practical and subs subsistent mode of production, they had to provide education that was plain and simple. So since wala pang uh, other countries na uh, medyo established na, hindi pa na colonize ang Philippines, so the, the way of uh, learning or the education itself is quite plain and simple. Um, Pag-aaralan ang native alphabet, which is alibata. Tuturuan ang mga uh, lalaki kung paano mo uh, mangisda, uh, to, to hunt for foods, 
to do these, you know, manly works for women a man, syempre for um, to do the household works also. And there's this uh, very prominent or um, uh, a high impact role of of women. So let's see. So the the educators or the teachers during the pre-colonial era were the babaylan and the and the Catalonan. So kung mapapanood natin, di ba sa uh, ano nga ba yung palabas na yun sa sa GMA? Uh, I think it's the Urd Urduha, di ba? Uh, makikita natin may mga babaylan or other um Filipino film na dinidiscuss na pinoportray ang mga babaylan usually mga babae to eh so gifted with wisdom and knowledge on spirituality and the system of running their own society they were respected by the people of the society well it, even in the past if you're a teacher if you're uh, a babaylan talagang are uh, well respected ka so, therefore, the type of education that was taught was one of beliefs and tradition. So, kung ano yung na, natutunan ng mga kanununuan, yun ang pinapass down sa mga uh, studyante nila. So, however, since there was insufficient scientific learning, they lack efficient means of economic production. So, ang focus lang ay uh, sa community, uh, ano makakaraos sa araw-araw na pamumuhay. Laging yun lang ang pinafocus. So, education was truly valued by the early Filipinos. The fathers trained their sons in how to hunt and other means of maintaining a livelihood. For mothers naman, they were in charge of their girls and instructing on household chores. So, si uh, yung mga boys or men, more of uh, livelihood. Okay, focusing on livelihood uh, skills. For women, more of household chores. So, the purpose of this type of education was to prepare both boys and girls to become good husbands and wives in the future. Both Filipino men and women knew how to read and write using their own alphabet called Alibata. So, even in the past, no, literacy is really important. So, it was composed of 17 symbols, each representing the letters of the alphabet. The symbols contained three vowels and the rest were consonants. I, we will not discuss the Alibata. Um, si, si social studies yun na ang, uh, or history ang magdi-discuss yan. Next. So, since... Um, wala pang Christianity non. Communities were Muslim, like those on Mindanao, and education was proliferated through the religion of Islam. The imam or ulema were the declared teachers. The children were taught how to read, write, and comprehend Arabic by using the Quran as their holy book. Okay. So besides that, uh, actually there are also um, different um different beliefs in each re region kaya uh, depende rin yan sa region or dun sa isla nung in the past here in the Philippines so to sum up informal and unstructured are the words best used to describe the education in the Philippines so the type of education was not institutionalized institutionalized and separate institutions for education were not in place so, as mentioned, it depends on the region or kung ano man ang beliefs ng no, uh, group of people na yun. So, education during the Spanish period compared with the systems of the early settlers, um, ang nangyari ay mas naging formal na ang educational system. So, there were Christian schools built and it was mandated by the Augustinians and established in Cebu in 1565. Na-established na rin during the uh, Spanish period ang primary, primary level to the tertiary level education. 
So Christian doctrines were the main focus of these schools and schools for boys and girls were separate. So meron ng, uh, yun nga mentioned, primary to tertiary level. Ang focus ay uh, Christian doctrines, kaya nag-flourish yung Christianity during Spanish period, the uh, colonialization. And um, kung titignan din naman natin ang history, ang women or girls doesn't really have uh, a lot of opportunity for them to go to school. Lagi talaga yung mga, yung mga boys, right? So, uh, for this one, kaya din sila pinaghiwalay as mentioned in the PowerPoint because yung mga boys mas uh, comprehensive, mas madaming um, uh, tinuturo sa kanila or the, the curriculum itself is different versus dun sa girls. That's why they are uh, separate, separately um, taught in schools. So, another factor pa besides the, the gender bias. So, there are uh, only wealthy Filipinos or the illustrados were accommodated by the schools. So, worse is, you know, na, not, not everyone has the chance lalo na uh, pag walang enough na, na money to support a child to go to school. So, more negative effects were brought about by colonial education for the Filipinos. I think uh, from your history subject uh, about Philippine history na, na kita natin, na discuss sa atin kung ano nangyari during the Spanish period and uh, yes, we were enlightened with new knowledge, new concepts, ideas. However, um, there were a lot of uh, negative negative things happened. That's uh, the 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 major um, happening during the Spanish colonialization. Okay, next. The Spanish authorities in the Philippines were mandated to educate the natives, to teach them how to read and write, and to learn Spanish. So, kasama din sa curriculum ng um, dito sa Pilipinas noon, besides the Christian doctrines, is also Spanish language. So, however, given the realities of the time, the last order was quite impossible. Okay, so first, the number of Spaniards in the archipelago was limited, so the teaching of Spanish at the time was minimal. So since there were so many tribes, tapos magkakalayo pa yung mga islands, kaya yung uh, Spanish language hindi rin naman siya ganun nag-flourish sa atin. That's why, well, that's why we have our... Uh, own language. So, there are some Filipino or Tagalog terms from uh, the Spanish language. Okay, so faced with these problems, the friars, the vanguard of evangel evangelization and education, found an alternative which was to learn the native languages first so that they could use them as tools to evan evangelize and teach the natives in the missionary schools. So, Spanish was also taught to those who were interested. Ayan. Uh, the, the first print, printing press was introduced. Thomas Pinpin, uh, the prince of Filipino printers, made sure he published a book on how to learn Spanish. Okay, and there were also Spanish Chinese dictionaries. So, the public school system in the Philippines, it was born in 1863 with the passage of the Education Reform Act in Spanish courts. Uh, from there, um, implementation on the training of both male and female teachers after the establishment of the Escuela Normal. Kaya pag nakikita natin or may... Um, may mga universities na may normal ang name. It means it focuses on uh, 
training male female for uh, to become i mean an educator or a teacher okay so there were uh, a lot of um, improvements in the educational system however it's still controlled by uh, yeah, missionaries a lot of um, Christianity uh, topics um, you know what's what's in the Bible those um, uh, standards it is mainly or highly discussed encouraged na this is what we should follow okay so as the early part of the 17th century approached there was already a system laid down for the secondary and tertiary education but it was not direct directed only by christian doctrines as the priests and monks worked together with the civil authorities so um, yung primary schools, it focuses now on religious and secular subjects. Okay, so during the that time also, nung um, na, na de develop na yung educational system sa Philippines, nagkakaroon na ng certain rules, ng foundations. Now they um, implemented a compulsory elementary education that is ayan, the education became free to all children between the ages of 7 and 13 so the the philippines were already ahead of most other neighboring asian colonies in general education no during that time pala nagiging uh, advanced na yung yung philippines because of education uh, yun naman din ang, ang magandang uh, pinigay. However, um, di natin inaasahan yung mga turn of events that time. But still, at least with that, uh, with the uh, Spanish implementing uh, a standard, a foundation for our educational system for us to be critically uh, awakened it eh, yon do nag spark ang, ang revolution okay so although a systematic and institutionalized kind of education was established there was still inequality so ang focus talaga ng educational system ay uh, to become religious and patriarchal so as mentioned before, there's during this time my bias sa uh, men and women. So tinuturuan ang mga uh, mga students na men should be the head of the family, women should be at home serving their uh, their husbands. But definitely now, kung ikukumpara natin ngayon, hindi na ganon. Maraming magwawalang babae <laughs> kung, kung ganon. Well, I, I also, to be honest, I also disagree. Lalo na ngayon na uh, maraming opportunities for women and we can see that women are also um, excelling in the different fields. So, ngayon, recently lang din nagkaroon ang... Uh, uh, ang, or nagkaroon ng equal rights between men and women. Okay, anyway, so much for that. So, the higher priority for educational attainment was placed on men rather than on women. Although the mestizos and wealthy people enjoyed the privileges of entering prestigious schools, there were women-only vocational schools. So, new vocational schools, it's only for women. Um, at itong mga vocational schools, it's focus not on, uh, kunyari, engineering or to become an architect or to become a doctor. No, it's more of practical skills or practical lessons. 
So, however, most women were denied their rights to education due to the patriarchal belief that women should only or should stay only at home. So, uh, yun nga, uh, in the past, there's still uh, stereotyping um, inequalities in uh, between men and women. So, with regard to higher education, the students graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree. So, Colegio de San Ignacio was the first college schools for the boys. Then, Colegio de San Idelfonso. Then, Escuela Pia. Then, later, it was called the Ateneo de Municipal, which is now the famous Ateneo de Manila University. Uh, meron ding Colegio de San Jose. So, they established one of the best universities in the Philippines, the University of St. Tomas. So, this was uh, established by the Dominicans. And another university for orphan boys, which is San Juan de Letran. So, compared with the boys, it took a little time to establish schools and colleges for girls. In 1589, Colegio de Santa Potenciana was open for girls. This was the first school and college for girls. Following the birth of the first school for women, Colegio de Santa Isabel, I believe, uh, ito yung nasa um, tapat ng Luneta Park. So, it opened 1632, the religious congregations instituted Beat Beaterio. The sole purpose of this was to provide education for orphan girls who could not afford to educate themselves. So, mostly the lessons are home, home economics or home arts like cooking, embroidery, sewing, and other skills necessary for, for good housekeeping. So, even though many universities and schools, uh, institutions were established, science and mathematics were not much taught to the students. The missionaries greatly emphasized teaching the Christian doctrines, the reading of Spanish books, and a bit of the uh, relevant native language. So, talagang ang, ang uh, Spanish during that time, Eh, pinapamper na ang mga Filipinos to you know to become to become their their uh, to become Spanish actually <laughs> or for the Philippines to become a part of Spain that's it kasi nakafocus talaga sa language sa Spanish and sa Christian doctrines and probably uh, eventually they will um, uh, own the, the Philippines. Pero, syempre, hindi nangyari yun. So, the decree of education in 1863 established the first ever educational system in the Philippines. It required the government to provide school institutions for boys and girls in every town. Given the situation, the Spanish school started accepting Filipino students. It was during this time that the, that the intellectual Filipinos emerged. This also brought about the establishment of the normal, normal schools, which gave more opportunity to the Filipinos to attain a sound education. So the normal schools offered a three-year teacher-led education at the primary level. So yung mga normal schools na yan, it's um, to train students to become a teacher. So, during these times, uh, napopolish na yung educational system here in the Philippines. Now, during the American period, um, Americans brought many cultural and traditional changes to the country. Um, so, these strong influences can still be seen in the lifestyle of the Filipinos. Kahit hanggang ngayon, no? Uh, marami pa ding mga kultura ng uh, America. And actually, I, I think somehow, even the, the Spanish, uh, they have influence a lot in our, or in what we are now. 
um, na pass down na eh, from our lolo, lola, uh, and also their their lolos and lolas in the past, hanggang sa uh, ganito na ang, ang lifestyle natin ngayon. So, with their motive to spread their cultural values, uh, they taught Filipinos how to speak the English language. Um, education became a very important issue. Okay. And, um, naging mas, mas enhance, mas, um, improve talaga ang, ang, uh, syllabus, ang curriculum natin when, uh, they came. Siyempre, uh, in, in the past, Americans, um, they are widely known for inventions, for scientific discoveries, the industrial revolution, sobrang laki ng, um, contribution nila dyan. So, Shinere nila yung ganong knowledge then with Filipinos. However, there are still discrimination. Uh, kung i-research nyo, may ginawang um, uh, et, parang editorial page ang isang writer from America. Uh, parang minamak ang mga Filipinos no, from being illiterate, from being uh, for them, we are uh, idiots and, and stupid. No, it, it's quite hurtful, syempre. But, I mean, look at us now. Uh, though, hindi man ganun ka uh, kaunlad pa, pero there are many uh, Filipinos who had uh, great contribution to the society. So, to continue, every child from age 7 was obliged to register at the nearest school. So, school supplies were also provided for free. So, nagkaroon, dito, nagkaroon pa din ng elementary. So, si primary, naging elementary na. Okay. Then, um, sa, sa elementary pala, si, si primary ay yung first um, four years. Then, intermediate ay next three years. Uh, kasama dito yung kinder or preparatory. Then, secondary or yung high school. Then, the tertiary or college. Okay, so, during this time then religion was not part of the school curriculum. So, hindi na nila binigyan ng ganong uh, importansya. If students excelled academically, they were given a chance to continue their studies and to pursue their expertise in their chosen fields or professions in the United States. So, pwede ka maging uh, parang ex exchange students. As long as you are, you know, you're academically uh, competent or excellent. So, scholar was the word used for them as the government covered all their expenses. However, syempre merong kapalit. They were to teach or work in government offices after they finished their studies. Actually, until now, practice pa din to. Um, there are many students na pinapadala abroad, um, all expense paid, even the tuition fee, the living expenses. Pero ang kapalit ay kailangan kang mag-render uh, ng service sa, kunyari, sa Pilipinas, magturo ka, for a period of time, okay, which is not not bad actually. That being a, a professor is also fulfilling. Being a teacher is is a, a fulfilling job. So Judge Jose Abad Santos, Francisco Benitez, and Doctor Honoria Season were some of the successful scholars. So, during the American period also, volunteer American soldiers were the first teachers of the Filipinos. So, narinig nyo na siguro to during our uh, history or social studies. Ang tawag natin sa kanila ay mga thomasites. Okay, so, building classrooms, whatever they were assigned was part of their mission. Uh, these pioneer teachers stopped teaching when a group of teachers from the U.S. came to the country aboard the ship Sheridan. So, that's the uh, Thomasites. Many elementary and secondary schools left behind by the Spaniards were recycled 
and new ones were established in cities and provinces. So, in-improve nila yung mga uh, schools na yun, um, yung, yung curriculum, the uh, school itself, and so on. So, nagkaroon na ng agricultural, business, normal, and vocational schools. So, naging diverse na or marami ng um, fields of knowledge ang uh, ino-offer sa mga schools. So, the following were some of the most important colleges during the American occupation. Philippine Normal School or the Philippine Normal University, National University, St. Paul University, uh, Zamboanga Normal School or Western Mindanao State University, University of the Philippines, University of Manila, Philippine Women's University, and FE, Far East, Eastern University. While the Philippine Nautical School or the Philippine School of Arts and Trades in the Central uh, Luzon Agricultural Agriculture sorry, School were offering vocational education at that time. So, during those times, uh, maliliit pa lang yung schools or um, ito lang ang mga in-offer. Then, uh, now, lumaki yung mga schools na to from vocational schools or colleges, naging university na. Okay. So, as far as remote areas were concerned, such as the Mountain Province and some parts of Mindanao, schools were built where attention was given to vocational and health practices. So, uh, ang nangyari is kung ano yung kailangan doon and also feasible na, na curriculum, yun lang yung in-offer sa mga uh, remote areas. In accordance with the 1935 Constitution, free education in public schools all over the country was provided by the Commonwealth. So, yung <clears throat> excuse me, free education in public schools, well, it's it's for high school. Nationalism was emphasized in schools, teaching the students about the deceased Filipino heroes. So, dito nagsimula na yung uh, pagiging nationalism tinuturo na sa, sa school. So, the history, the um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the different um, things that a Filipino should, should know. Cooking and farming, sewing, and some household activities together with vocational education were given importance. So, home economics, industrial arts, or the, the TLE in general, uh, nag-stay pa din. Okay? Nasa curriculum pa din, uh, mas improve na and hindi lang uh, para sa mga babae. So, discipline and proper manners were also not neglected. The Institute of Private Education aimed at observing private schools was established. Okay? So, there are um, increasing student population uh, 400 private schools reach 10,000 students. Formal education was not provided for youngsters. Adult education, <coughs> excuse me, adult education was also present. Now, during the Japanese period naman, I thought major changes then. Um, so, it was impl implemented a year later when the Americans were out of the picture, um, ito na ang uh, goals nila or objectives in terms of the education here in the Philippines. So, to enrich the Filipino culture and stop patronizing Western, Western countries, which is, well, it's still a good, it, it's a good uh, learning objective or educational objective. To recognize that the Philippines is a part of the greater Asia co-prosperity sphere so that the Philippine and Japan could have good relations. To boost the morality of the Filipinos and instill cautiousness of materialism. To forget and stop English language learning. However, they should learn or adopt Nipongo. So this, or Nihongo. This is the uh, language of the Japanese people to proliferate primary and vocational education, and to foster love for work. Siyempre, 
uh, Japanese are known for you know, being hard worker, right? That's why this is uh, they they have also included this principle in the educational system. So health and public welfare was established. Um, the Ministry of Education was sponsored and created by the Japanese government. So during those times, teaching of Tagalog, Philippine history and character education was also observed in our schools. So again, uh, nag instill in instill nila yung uh, Japanese culture, which is passion for work and dignity of labor. So aside from teaching Nipongo and using entirely pro-Japanese books and material at all levels of education, the Japanese also showed movies and organized cultural productions. Uh, performers such as singers and dancers were brought to the Philippines together with painters, singers, and scholars so that the Filipino would acquire inspiration, love, sympathy, and the cooperation among them. So, uh, siguro dito na rin na uso yung uh, Filipinos going to Japan for, you know, in the entertainment uh, industry. Filipinos were keen and did not just blindly believe the excessive promises of the Japanese. Now, in the present period, um, ang pinaka-dominant ay ang Americans. Okay, the the culture that they have instilled with us. This is the uh, very dominant. Nagstay ang ang English language at until now, actually, it's it's so important to know the English language. Besides that, with the agriculture, the business, um, the the other fields of of uh, knowledge that they have introduced. It's still here and mas lumagupa. Okay, mas lumawak pa. So schools are categorized into public and private high schools. Well, even in in uh, college, the preparatory primary level consists of nurseries, kindergartens, and preparatory schools are uh, mostly in private schools. Then we have the six years primary education or our elementary. So, dito na start yung uh, sa nursery or the, sa kinder na start yung K to 12 natin. No? I iba na ngayon eh. Nag mas iba pa dito actually. Then, uh, we have four years in secondary education and just want to add two years in senior high school. And students can choose their track, the, the, the track or field that they are interested. So from that track or specialization from senior high school, uh, it is advice that they continue that until college. Okay? So, uh, ngayon, ang pinapatupad na natin ay ang K-12. So, makikita natin yung, yung progress of how the, the education in the Philippines transformed from different periods, right? From Spanish, uh, from uh, pre-Spanish period, uh, Alibata, mga teachers natin ay ang mga babaylan. There are some regions teaching the, the beliefs of that community. Uh, mostly are Muslim, so they follow the uh, the doctrines of the Quran. Then you have this the Spanish period na nakafocus sa Spanish language, culture, and Christianity. Then we have the American period na and damering ng yaring changes, but they abolished um, <clears throat> excuse me learning Spanish and introduced the English language. Then Japanese and the present period. Now we have the K to twelve and um, there are many critics, there are many uh, issues with the new curriculum in education, but um, I think there's, with, with thorough, continuous research and development, definitely, uh, sana mas gumanda pa, or mas, 
uh, maging strong pa yung uh, yung educational system here in the Philippines. Anyway, going back to home economics, so as we can see that um, the, the, the topics in home economics play a really vital role. Uh, ito yung um, kahit na it was promoted in the past that it's just for, for women, but there are a lot of stories na, you know, business stories or success stories in the home economics and people saw that ay ah, yung home economics pala malaki yung potential so why not we we <coughs> excuse me we not just teach it to women not just teach this in the vocational schools but also make this a career the the fields and um as we have observed now, right? Sobrang essential ng, ng home economics. Like this pandemic. Um, in terms of food. Sobrang importante ng, ng food industry during this pandemic. And hindi sila na masyadong naapektuhan nung, nung pandemic. So, there's a really, a really big opportunity here. From... A simple cooking, no? Yung lang ang pinopromote in the past. Cookery uh, for household management. Now, we have food science and technology. That's why we have these delicious foods because of those those areas. And, um, ano pa ba? Uh, even finance, I guess. I guess fi finance, finance is uh, from also here, from home economics because we need to know how to to budget to manage the the money in a household and eventually managing the finances of our own business okay so thank you so much for uh, watching our video lecture uh, I think I have discussed some of the uh, important points well for the <coughs> excuse me for the um, Next video lecture, probably it would be module 2. And I'll just uh, give you other videos um, supporting uh, module 1's topic. Okay, so please check our Google Classroom. I have already posted the engagement activity and the performance task. So you can start answering it. Again, if you have questions, please send me a message. So, thank you once again and ingat lahat. Thank you!